Welcome to the December Monthly Market Report. I'm David, and for the next 20 minutes, we'll be going through some of the most important topics in real estate right now. You know, this is the last monthly market report, the December 2021 monthly market report of this year. And I want to say quickly just a, a thank you to all of you that watch the monthly market report uh, each month so that you are the most educated advisor on these topics in the market that you serve. So to get started today, we're going to talk about what is coming up in the real estate market uh, over the winter. And, you know, to do that, what I want to do is, get, you know, pose a question. The question is, when do most listings come on the market? You know, in a normal market, it would be the second quarter of each year. Think about that as the spring real estate market. It's highlighted here April, May, and June of every year. And the reality is the market right now is anything but normal. And in that, we're going to kind of throw out this answer in the second quarter of the year. And, and I'm going to make the case over the next few minutes that we'll see more listings this winter than we will in any other time of the year. And the reality of the pandemic and coming out of the last couple of years is seasonality in the real estate market has kind of been thrown out the window. So let's take a look at this because I think this is a big point and, and really a point that underscores, we'll see a lot of business this winter, maybe a lot more business than many people are expecting. So we'll start here. Uh, home sellers have historically moved when something in their lives changed, a new baby, a marriage, a divorce, or a new job. This comes from Jessica Lotz, the Vice President of Demographics at NAR. And I think we know this, that life change drives our business. But she goes on to say the pandemic has impacted everyone. And for many, this became an impetus to sell and make a housing trade. So no doubt that seasonality, all of these uh, things that used to drive our business still do on some respect, but the pandemic caused a lot of people to say, we need something different in a home. We need to make a different decision about our home. And we're seeing the results of that. Goes on to say the pandemic likely spurred occupants to shorten their home stay as tenure in the home decreased from eight years uh, to eight years from 10 years, according to the report. This is important here. This is the largest single year change in home tenure since NAR began collecting such data. You know, if you're like me and you grew up in this business, you've been in the business a while, you know that uh, we used to say somebody moved every maybe five, six years, and that's traditionally how our business ran. But you, know, you go through the, the housing crisis, and after 2008, tenure in homes began to rise. And I'm going to show you what that looked like uh, in just a moment here. But what we're seeing in this new report is we're starting to see that tenure come down. Very interesting as we look at it. Here's what this looks like graphically. Going all the way back to 1985, you see that average about six years of uh, someone staying in their home go through the housing crisis, people start staying in homes longer, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. The average just over nine years uh, in a home over the last, call it 10 years or so. And there are a lot of good reasons for that. A lot of people maybe didn't have the equity uh, to, to make a move. Maybe they were underwater for a while in the home that they own. Maybe they just said, you know what, we're not going to do anything. We're going to try to pay this house off and stay here because we saw what happened. Uh, to people during uh, the housing crisis in 2008. And now coming out of the pandemic, we're seeing that dip down. Now, I'm certainly not saying that one year would make a trend by any stretch of the imagination, but I think we can say there represents pent up seller demand in all those years that folks have stayed in their homes. We can say the meaning of home has dramatically changed. We can say there's more equity in homes today than there has been ever before. All of this leading to many people thinking is now the time to make a move. I do believe we'll start to see that in the winter. Let's take a look at what uh, George Ratu at Realtor.com says. So the pandemic has delayed plans for many Americans and homeowners looking to move on to the next stage of life. And that's no exception. Recent survey data suggests the majority of prospective sellers are actively preparing to enter the market this winter. So going back, a lot of reasons we just talked about folks thinking about moving, this study saying we're seeing a lot of those people preparing to enter the market this winter. In that study, 65% said they have either just listed or planned to this winter. 93% say they've already taken the steps towards listing their home, including working with an agent. 
36% have researched the value of their home and others in the neighborhood as well as started making uh, repairs or doing what they need to do to sell their home. I think today in this market, being prepared, being educated, and then being the educator is key. And third, taking action. Based on this information, my challenge to you is over the next few weeks, what are you going to do with it? We'll likely see more people than uh, you know we've seen in a long time over the next few weeks as we head into the holiday season and the end of the year. And at the end of this monthly market report, I'm going to talk about what we need to have on our phones during that time to show people what's happening in real estate. But no doubt, taking action on this is what we need to be doing right now. I'll, I'll wrap this up with this. Daniel Hale says, this listing rose now for a second week in a row with our recent survey data suggesting that a growing share of homeowners and potential sellers are eager to find new homes. There's reason to believe this is the start of a welcome trend, especially as we move into colder months. You know, as we look into the winter, I think we're gonna see more activity among sellers and among buyers than we've seen in quite some time. And, and if we go back to what we were talking about on the, the, the front end of the monthly market report today, seasonality has been thrown out of uh, the window in our business coming through the pandemic. We've had two phenomenal years uh, in real estate. I expect a, another great year next year, but I think we're going to see a lot of business over the winter. And my aim today is to prepare you for that so you can go out and serve your clients and be ready for that. You and your team be ready for that, uh, uh, that, that rush of business. Let's talk just a minute about interest rates. Probably one of the biggest uh, updates or you know, topics that's going to be talked about as we go into the new year. What's going on with interest rates? You know, the overall outlook is interest rates are going to rise. I'll talk about that. But this is a look right now at the 30-year fix. We've used this many times over the last couple of years because, you know, we look at January 2020, prior to the pandemic, knocking on the door of 4%. Right now, the average 30-year fixed is 3.1%. You know, many calling for that rise going into next year. I'll show you what forecasters are saying. But if you were to ask me what's going to happen with interest rates, I think we're going to go back to where we were. This is a historical perspective on interest rates, you know, looking at 2016, 17, 18, 19, four really, I'm going to call them normal years in real estate. And we bounce somewhere between three and a half and 5%. I think we're heading back there. I think we're heading back into a much more uh, normal interest rate environment. We've seen some phenomenal rates over the last uh, year or so, uh, historically low rates on a 30-year fixed. And I think we're going to head back into a time where we were prior to the pandemic. Now, you know, in our business, many people you know, oftentimes say, well, what's the impact of rising rates on home prices, uh, home sales, all of those things? And if rates are going to rise, that's going to mean we're not going to sell as many homes. That's going to mean the market's impacted. Well, our research team went back and took a look at the impact on a rising interest rate environment and home prices and home sales. And I want to give that to you. Uh, right now so that you have the confidence in those conversations to give people perspective. First one, home prices are slightly impacted by rising mortgage rates. This is a look going all the way back to 2000. And what you see in the line graph there is the interest rate. And what you see in the bar graph is appreciation or depreciation during the housing crisis. The quick thing I want to uh, I want to point out is in each rising interest rate environment, there's no depreciation, except during that housing crisis. And, and we see, okay, when you start to look at rising interest rate environments, the first one around 2005, less appreciation in 2006. You look at kind of 2012, 13, and 14, rising interest rate environment, less appreciation the last year. The next one in 16, 17, and 18, we go up and come back down a little bit. So slight impact and home price appreciation. Price appreciation, though, as we look at that, is resistant to rising mortgage rates. And here's why. Mark Fleming, I think, kind of sums this up best. Home price appreciation is resistant to rising mortgage rates primarily because most sellers would rather withdraw from the market than sell at lower prices, a phenomenon we refer to as downside sticky. So somebody's going to say, Okay, if, if I can't get as much for my home or my home is not appreciating as fast, we'll just take it off the market. That's what Mark's saying there. So we don't see depreciation in the market. Maybe price is slightly impacted by 
rising interest rate. The other question is home sales. Are they impacted uh, by rising interest rates? Well, if you go back all the way back to 1999, which what you see in this uh, graphic where we have interest rates in the line graph and home sales in the bar graph, we can see home sales aren't impacted by rising mortgage rates. Now, I won't walk you through each scenario. You can see on here when you download the slides and even here on the screen, each one of the red bars being rising interest rate environments and that not corresponding with lower home sales. So if that question does come up that, you know, you know, interest rates are rising, that's going to mean we're going to sell less homes. The question I would have for somebody is based on what? Based on what information? Because when you go back and look at it historically, it just doesn't prove out. So I hope that'll help you as you have, have you know, the conversations with people because the bottom line here is context matters right now for the housing market and certainly for purchase demand. The economy is improving. Millennials are continuing to age into their prime home buying years in large numbers. So the context remains good for the housing market. I think overall, as we look at that, we can expect a rising interest rate environment going into next year. I don't see that affecting uh, the housing market dramatically. It will cost more to buy a home. Uh, as uh, as we go through that, and I think you should expect that as we go throughout uh, the next several months and the next year. You know, one thing I want to give you as we go through this is what are the slides that you need to have on your home this hol- uh, on your phone this holiday season. You know, over the next few weeks, many of us will be uh, in holiday gatherings, in uh, gatherings with family and friends, maybe. The church we attend, I, I'm not going to suggest that you're going to turn all of those into a listing appointment by any stretch of the imagination. But I think having these graphics on your phone will help explain some things and maybe show somebody something and say, let's get together next week or let's get together when it's convenient for you and talk about your plans. You know, the folks that, that I think we want to talk to you right now are those that are saying, you know, we might do something in a year or two. I want to educate them about this market. First graphic, mortgage rate projections. This is an outlook from the the, the four leading providers we follow, Fannie, Freddie, MBA, and NAR. And what are they saying? Sometime between the middle and the end of next year, forecasting us between three and a half and 4% in the average 30 year fix. So it's gonna cost more. And I think you should expect interest rates to rise. Now I'm not here today with a crystal ball to say, this is what interest rates are gonna be by any stretch of the imagination. But I am here to say, I think we can expect a rising interest rate environment and educating people about that going into next year is going to be our job. The second graphic I would have my ho- on my phone is the home price forecast for 2022. You know, a lot of people saying, well, what's going to happen to housing next year? I'm concerned. I'm concerned that, you know, here we go again. Well, forecasters are calling for 5.1 on average uh, percent appreciation in housing next year. You see anywhere from seven and a half to almost 3% uh, appreciation on the low side. This is a direct nod to uh, seeing more inventory come in the market. You know, uh, price will always be dictated by supply and demand in any market. And, and this helps people say, okay, this is what we can expect relative to the housing market going into next year. You know, the other question that starts to come up and is on people's minds at times is, is the housing market going to crash? You know, I'm concerned about what I've seen and forbearance and all the things that we know uh, have happened in our business. The bottom line here is that housing sales are forecasted to increase this year and perform very well again in 2022. We always want to remind people that last year in 2020, we sold six and a half million homes in this country. We're forecasted to sell more than that this year and more than that next year leading for the past two years, phenomenal years in the real estate market, a very, very good year next year as well. Reminding people that, keeping people aware of that is going to be key. This slide here always does a great job to show just where we're at in the real estate market based on months of inventory and and the extreme seller's market that we're in. Thinking about selling your home, there's literally never been a better time. And sometimes that feels like a broken record uh, in us saying, and I know certainly all of you out there that are working with uh, with sellers and those thinking about selling have said that many, many times. This graphic just underscores. It underscores going all the way back to 1999, what does the market look like? And it's been a great seller's market for those that have decided to sell. 
You know, the last question that I'll, I'll kind of kind of address on these slides you need to have on your phone is the buyer that says, I don't know if I want to buy at the top of the market, which, you know, you look at price appreciation, certainly not the top of the market, but that is a feeling. The buyer that says, you know what, if we sell, we're going to have to pay more for another home is what's forecasted for appreciation. You know, the best time to buy a, a home was this year. The next best time is right now. It was a survey done by the Home Price Expectation Survey. Based on this year, all the right way through 2026, buying a home, average price home, what appreciation is at stake? $111,000, just over $111,000 in real appreciation over the next five years. Helping that buyer see what's at stake. Helping that buyer understand, you know what? It is a good time to go out uh, and buy a home. I think having these on our, our on our phone will help us answer those questions as we see more and more people. And they ask those questions because they know we're in real estate. And they, they, they see things in the news, they hear things, they hear about their neighbor that sold their house and they wonder, should I, should we be buying? Should we be selling? And we can be the educator in that scenario. You know, as always, I want to remind you about what's coming up. And I have one other slide I want to cover today, but the winter 2022 buyer and seller guides are available now. You know, I, I mentioned as we started the monthly market report today, I think we'll see more business this winter than we've seen in quite some time. And I think there are a lot of signs that point to that. Getting the buyer and the seller guides out and into the hands of your clients this winter is going to be key. It's going to equip them with everything they need to know to make a powerful and confident decision for them and their family. Is it the right time for us to buy? Is it the right time for us to sell uh, and move on? You're going to want to grab those and get those out. Build rapport before you even sit down and meet uh, with them. Great, great resource that I want you to take advantage of. You know, as we wrap up uh, this monthly market report, the last one for the year, I want to encourage you to take this information and get it out there. But I also want to acknowledge this, that we're at the end of the year and it's been a phenomenal year in real estate. Very, very busy year for so many of us. All of us could tell our own story about how busy it's been this year. And, and you know, I, I looked at this picture here and thought about you know, so many people that, you know, late night working on uh, a transaction and just that feeling of, uh, gosh, we are busy, busy, busy. Take the time uh, over the next few weeks to to rest uh, with your family and friends. Don't take all the uh, all the time, but, but take the time you need to rest and relax with your friends. Sir James Tyson said this, the moment you feel most tired is the moment you must accelerate because that's when everybody else is feeling tired as well. But if you can break through that pain barrier, you can achieve great things. I think no doubt those of us that take advantage of this winter market, take advantage of those sellers that wanna list, those buyers that wanna buy right now, and I think we'll see a lot of business over the next several months, will begin the year with momentum that will carry them through the rest of the year. You begin 2022 strong, you will carry that momentum throughout the year. So my encouragement to you is to take the time with your family and friends over the holiday season, but to use this time as well to get out there and have those conversations. As always, we're grateful for your support of the monthly market report and watching this. Uh, all of these slides are available to you. You can download those, use those, to take action to get the message out there. We'll see you back next year. Take care.